Hello and welcome to the James Grant from Podcast Super Soul Model Series. Today's episode is how to reprogram your subconscious mind. Welcome back to the podcast. Everything on this show is designed to help uplift you and inspire you and help you tune into natural well-being using your mind, body and soul. Natural well-being is our natural state of mind. Sometimes we're there and sometimes we're not. And everything on this show is here to help you move towards natural well-being so you feel vivacious, you feel vitality, you have plenty of energy and everything in your life is just constantly working out for you. It does take time and it does take repetition which is why I always try to bring new subjects in to talk about for you to think differently and approach life a little bit differently because if you keep doing the same old things you're going to keep getting the same old results and I want you to have an updated life where you can feel fantastic, feel successful, feel uplifted and allow life to bring you the magic. So today's episode is about how to reprogram your subconscious mind. I've been a student of the mind for about 20 years and I'm fascinated about how the mind works and the mind is phenomenal. But in short, it's really just a filter. The mind will show you a filter of whatever you are constantly thinking about. So everything that I've learned and everything that I've studied from having read so many books and having done my own experiences and having done 17 years plus of meditation daily, twice a day, you learn a few things, but it's not necessarily my learnings and my findings that I want you to have. I want you to have your own experience because it's your experience that becomes the teacher. But I'm, I wanna come back and report in like a messenger, so to speak, about what I've found. And then at least that gives you an idea to go off and, and maybe have your own findings because that's what's empowering here, having your own findings so that you can just take away that experience, that wisdom, and then you know base your assumptions on that, because that's what's really important. So what is the subconscious mind? The subconscious mind can be likened to like an iceberg. The iceberg at the top, you can see it protruding out from the water is this beautiful piece of ice. Now underneath the water is the larger part of the iceberg. That could be referred to as the subconscious mind and the top part can be referred to above the water as the conscious mind. The conscious mind is what you're always thinking about day to day life and the subconscious mind is all your thoughts and belief systems that you have been uh, programmed with and absorbed and all your outlook into the world which you've absorbed in your childhood years. I also like to refer to the subconscious mind as the inner child. Um, but a lot of today's episode is really going to be based on a few different people's uh, thoughts and belief systems about what the subconscious mind is. And then I want to share with you ways in which I have begun to reprogram my mind and reprogram my subconscious mind to get it working for me. And then I want that for you as well. I want to be able to show you ways in which you can reprogram your subconscious mind easily. But remember, for us to learn, it takes repetition. So let's in order to talk about the subconscious mind, I need to talk about your journey through different brainwave levels, because this becomes a lot more interesting scientifically, so you can understand the story of your life and how you've worked from a scientific perspective with your brainwave patterns, because there's five brainwave patterns I'm gonna talk about today, which have been largely influencing your day-to-day -day life from the time you were uh, out of your mother's womb to now, gamma, beta, alpha, theta, and delta. Now, what is gamma? Gamma is between 31 and 100 hertz. At this brainwave pattern, you're operating at a peak performance. This is when you are in the zone. And in this zone, you are able to respond on a sixpence. You are able to respond to life. So if you're a pro tennis player and you're at your peak in that moment, you're hitting high levels of gamma in your brainwave patterns, which is amazing. Now, it's very difficult to sustain this level for a long period of time, but when you enter it, you're in high peak performance. You're able to respond and react so quickly and effectively. Below gamma is beta, and that beta operates between 16 and 30 hertz. At this level, you're just where most adults are, operating at your everyday levels of alertness. Now, after that comes alpha. Alpha is a very interesting brainwave pattern. At this level, which is between 8 and 13 hertz, you are beginning to relax. Um, you are in a creative mode. You're able to be um, a lot more chilled. You're in, you're in another zone. You're in flow in this one as well. Um, it's not as 
hyper as the gamma was at those high levels, but you are definitely in a good feeling mood. You're definitely in a good feeling zone in alpha. Now, after alpha comes theta, bit deeper now. We're getting much deeper. Four to seven hertz in theta, you're entering a deep state of meditation. And in this level, you're able to access um, imagination much more easily. You've got far more imagination and you're able to access deep levels of meditation. And this is a beautiful state to be in. It's also where some scientists say you can talk to the subconscious mind. And finally, going a bit deeper than uh, theta, we're going to delta. And delta operates between 0.1 and 3 hertz. And in this level, you enter deep restorative sleep. So when you've had a really good night's sleep, it's because you've hit this deep sleeping pattern of delta. These brainwave patterns were much, much slower, much more relaxing, much more restorative. Now, as you were a child, probably from about the age of 0 to 24 months or so, you were operating, as soon as you came out of your mother's womb, you were operating from a water element, which is the womb, into an air environment, which is a very different element to be in. And so as the body is beginning to repair and restore and grow, the baby, you, at between 0 and 24 months, you were operating at delta, which means you were sleeping so much to gain the energy to adjust to this air environment, this air element, where your spirit and your breath is beginning to adjust from the different breathing patterns that you had in the womb. So as, you, as babies grow, they, they need lots and lots of sleep in order to adjust to the new environment. And that's why babies sleep a lot. And now, as soon as you reach the ages of between about two and six, you go up your brainwave pattern. So we were at Delta, we're between 0 and 24 months. Now it's gone up to Theta. So between two and six, this is that deep state of meditation. Babies and kids do not need to meditate at all because they have this vivid imagination. Because remember, as I said earlier, as soon as you enter theta, you have a wonderful sense of imagination. So everything has this wonder, everything has this awe, the world seems new and bright and clear. And that is an amazing place to be. So kids between the ages of two and six are operating at this theta level. So as they're growing, their minds are being able to explore and pick up new things and they're able to use their imagination so vividly. So you read them a bedtime story and they go wild when you read them a story full of imagination. It's beautiful. After this, between about the ages of six and 12, the mind enters into alpha. Your subconscious mind is wide open to new ideas from your parents that you love and who are your teachers. Everything you learn from them you're absorbing and picking up or everything that you've learned from your guardians at that point in time that's what you're thinking and picking up some of those things are going to be positive and no doubt some of those things are going to be negative and it's usually to do with the the main three topics health relationships and money and finances so if you ever had problems with your, your parents having you know health or your guardians not having great health you will have learned from that environment through repetition, their habits of how they take care of themselves. And then you're gonna take them on as well. You're gonna learn how they were talking and thinking and feeling about money and finances, and you're gonna take them on yourself. And you're gonna be learning about how they relate to themselves, to each other, and to other people in the world. And you're gonna pick up the programs and the way that they interacted with each other in the world and to do with their finances and relationships and health. That's how you'll be taking on as well. So as a child, you're absorbing the information about how your parents have gone about living in their world. And they've learned that from their parents and their parents have learned that from their parents. So you can see from generation to generation to generation, everyone is passing down the conscious programs or unconscious programs of what they've learned from their forefathers until you decide that you want to have something different. And that's what we're going to show you in this show. How do we reprogram the subconscious mind to be able to change the limiting patterns and negative patterns that don't serve you anymore? And you can become truly aware of them when the pain is too much. Because when the pain is too much and you're finding, I don't know what's working, I know I need to change, and I know something needs to change, what is it? It means that you need to start looking at things and thinking of things differently. And as you begin to think of things differently and looking at things differently, you begin little by little to rewire and reprogram the subconscious mind. 
Now, there are four authors I really want to talk about today. Dr. Bruce Lipton, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Abraham Hicks, and I also want to talk about Dr. Joe Vitale and uh, Dr. Hugh Len. The reason why I'm talking about these particular people are because each of them come from a little different slant. Bruce Lipton's book, The Biology of Belief, great book. He talks about the power of the subconscious mind and how important it is to start reaching deeper levels of mind to reprogram it. Because as you begin to enter deeper levels of mind again, which you can do, and he talks about in his book, and I'm going to share with you a very brief synopsis here, that allows you to reprogram those limiting beliefs and limiting programs that are running in your subconscious mind. Dr. Joe Dispenza, in his book, um, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, talks about the repetition that everything you learn has to start in the mind and then go into the body. In order to change your unconscious programs, you need to learn through the mind first, repeatedly by doing new actions and building new habits before it falls into the body. A bit like driving. You have to learn, learn, learn when you learn to drive a car through your mind and through action. And then eventually it just becomes a habit and you know how to drive. It's in the body. You get in the car, you know what to do. And in order to change some programs in your life, you need to change the way that you're thinking and then change some of your habits differently in order for them to be stored in your body, which is what Dr. Joe Dispenza calls your subconscious mind. Now, another person is Abraham Hicks. Abraham Hicks says there is no subconscious mind because you're constantly having a vibrational output in the world all the time. So when you feel good, you're outputting that and that's what's coming back. When you feel bad, you're outputting that, so that's what's coming back. So the better you feel, the better things get, and the law of attraction will bring you more of how you're feeling. So if you're thinking and feeling really good, the law of attraction is gonna give you more things that feel good. And if you're having a negative experience in your life and you focus upon it all the time with emotion, with reaction, then the law of attraction is gonna bring you more things that feel like that. So Abraham Hicks says, there is no subconscious mind, it's your conscious mind constantly at work and law of attraction is mirroring back to you how you're feeling over and over again. And it only takes a thought to focus on for over 68 seconds before you get another thought and another thought and another thought and another thought before the emotion begins to change. So the next author I want to talk about is Dr. Hugh Len and Dr. Joe Vitale in the book Zero Limits. 2008, a mesmerizing book. Dr. Hugh Len says, the subconscious mind is actually called the inner child. And the inner child is that child within that was learning all those thoughts and belief systems and how the outlook, what you've learned from your parents in those formative years between the ages of roughly six and 12. That was when you were at that brainwave pattern between uh, theta and alpha. That's when you were absorbing, that's when you were learning, that's when you were looking to see how the world is shaped by your parents, by your guardians, by the people in your environment. So Dr. Hugh Len says the inner child is the one that you need to speak to in order to change your subconscious programs that are limiting. Each of these authors have something brilliant to offer in these books. And I like a bit of everything. So I take a, a little bit of everything that I've learned from each of them. I love Abraham Hicks saying that you aren't, there isn't a subconscious mind. It's just what you're broadcasting each day out into the world. So the better your thoughts, the better they feel, that's what's coming back. And I love the practical ways that um, Dr. Bruce Lipton and Joe Dispenza says in ways in which you can change your subconscious mind and those limiting beliefs and give them a new software update. And then I also love Dr. Hughes Len, uh, the way he refers to the subconscious mind as the inner child and making peace with that inner child within. Each of these are completely different and each of these require a little bit of effort. There has to be effort from the mind first, which is what I'm talking about with Dr. Joe Dispenza, in order to create the habit to be able to put it in the body, which becomes a program. If you can see that you're running an old iPhone program or an own analog program, if you're running an old program, you can't get the new app update. So if you have programs in your life, thoughts, beliefs of things not working out for you in terms of relationships, perhaps, then that's what's gonna be spilling out into your world. If you've got things of feeling that you've never had enough money, then that's what's gonna be spilling out into your world in terms of the filter. And if you feel as though you're not healthy because your parents weren't healthy and you've learned that you know health isn't something that, that's easy to come by, then that's what you're gonna be, your mind's gonna be filtering because your mind is the driver and your body is the vehicle. So you need to be able to be getting in your mind, 
learning how to drive your mind with better feeling thoughts to be able to allow the body to respond in time. And there has to be a delayment in time before the body responds. The mind has to create, the mind has to be the driver and the body will respond in time. So what are the ways in which you can reprogram your subconscious mind and get a software update? One of the ways you can do this is by affirmations. But in order to do these affirmations, you need to make sure that you're feeling good because otherwise they backfire and won't work. In fact, they'll keep you stuck and show you that you aren't where you want to be. An affirmation is making a statement of what it is that you want in the present moment. But when you're doing that with emotion and you feel good, such as I am healthy, wealthy and wise, and you do that feeling really, really good, then your mind will pick up on it based on those emotions. Because remember what you're thinking, feeling and saying with emotion comes back. But if you're saying that when you don't feel healthy, wealthy and wise, then your your body's just going to go, no, you're not. So I'm going to make sure I show you that you're not healthy, you're not wealthy and you're not wise. The mind is very simple. It's impartial, doesn't care. So affirmations are great, but only when you feel good. So when you feel good, that is the time to do it. And a lot of people say, say doing it first thing in the morning and last thing in the evening, because then you're at these deeper levels of mind. Because when you wake up in the morning, you are more likely to be in between theta and alpha, which is that which is the place where you can reprogram your mind. And as you go to sleep at night, you're you're between alpha and theta just as you drift drift off to sleep. And remember, as you drift off to sleep, you might be able to go into delta, but you, your conscious mind will be asleep by then and you'll be entering into the unconscious, into deep sleep. So first thing in the morning, last thing in the night is a good time to do affirmations. Another way you can reprogram your subconscious mind is by visualising before you go to sleep. As you visualise before you go to sleep, you're in this deeper state of mind and then you're able to tap into the subconscious mind because this is where the imagination is really rampant. If you're able to think and visualize what it is you want to want to have and encourage into your life, do it before you go to sleep so your subconscious mind can work on it before. Your mind sees in pictures. When I first started creating a vision board years ago, I was amazed to see what would happen. Not everything on that board has happened, but a lot of it has happened. And it came about so easily. I used to put an Aston Martin on my um, picture and then I put Top Gear on there as well. And then I also put myself in starring in a movie. So these vision boards, before I'd go to sleep, I'd look at them or before I'd go into a state of meditation, I'd look at them. And I'd be amazed to see how things unfolded. As it happens, I drove that Aston Martin that I had in my picture. As it happened, I starred in a movie. As it happened, I put, put Top Gear, always wanted to be on Top Gear. I did something for Top Gear. I was amazed to see these incredible little things that were happening to me as a result of feeding my mind pictures before I'd go to sleep or before I entered a deep state of meditation. So let's have a little backtrack. Number one, you can do affirmations, but only when you feel good, preferably in the morning or when you go to bed. Number two, visualisation. Visualisation when you wake up, or when you go to sleep. Usually best when you go to sleep so your subconscious mind can truly figure out what it is that you wanna bring into your life. Number three, creating vision boards. Creating vision boards and looking at them before you go to sleep or before you enter a state in meditation. This is a great way to program your subconscious mind. When you're exercising and you're feeling really, really high, start affirming what you want in your life. Number six, asking better empowering questions, affirmations. When you feel really down or you're really upset, you have to ask better questions, which is what if this is working out for me? What if things are gonna come together? What if everything's gonna work out even better than I can imagine? You need to use your mind to help you so you can start broadcasting that channel, as Abraham Hicks said, and start bringing it from negative to positive. And you only do that by asking better questions, which is interrupting the negative pattern. So if you want to reprogram your mind, that means you're going to have to start asking better questions because you don't ask better questions. You're going to revert back to the old ways, which are always what you learn between the ages of six and 12, which is maybe this is not supposed to work out for me. Maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's that. Or maybe I don't have enough money. What what, What if you ask something like this, if you're stuck for money? What if there's a wonderful way I can make money? What if I came into some unexpected income soon? What if... I found a way to be able to be a value to someone somewhere right now. What if the world 
starts to, to really improve in the next few months? What if my life starts to improve in the next few months? What if my relationships begin to improve on all levels? You've got to start thinking differently and interrupting those negative patterns. What if everything's going to work out for me and my kids? What if everything's going to work out for us as a family? What if this is going to turn out to be something even better than I can imagine? Boom, start interrupting those patterns and start changing what the content of your mind, what you're sending out. Otherwise, you're going to be reverting to those old, obsolete programs that are still running your show. One of my favourite things is to ask amazing questions just as I fall asleep, which is, why is my life amazing? Why is everything working out for me? Why am I helping millions and millions of people positively change? Why am I creating heaven on earth? Why am I having so much fun? Why is my life so enjoyable? Why do I have the perfect work-life balance? Why am I making so much money doing what I love? Why do I have so much fun and creativity in my life? Why are all my relationships so fun and f fulfilling? You know, stuff like that. Just start filling your mind with beautiful things. This is a wonderful way to be able to change the content of your mind and change those old programs that you may have learned into new ones. Why do I always have an abundance of money? Why am I always so prosperous? You know, what, what's the other one that we were concerned about? Health. Why am I so healthy? Why do I have empowering healthy habits? Boom, right as you go to sleep. Boom, over and over and over again. And maybe in the shower, turn it into a song because when the, when the body starts to have more energy, remember that's the perfect time to start um, saying your affirmations or even asking better questions because remember, we need to be in that higher state which means your brainwave frequency is going to be more optimal to be able to begin to change those old programs. And eventually, that will just be the way you roll. That will just be your habits and life will improve from that particular level. And another way to be able to change your subconscious mind is Ho'oponopono. And Ho'oponopono is a Hawaiian ancient spiritual technique for being able to talk to the, the inner child. It's just using four simple phrases over and over again to clean the mind of all the ill doings that it had the young mind picked up as a child. So in order to clean the mind over and over again, Dr. Hugh Len had suggested that there were four ways in order to clean the mind, which is to say these things quietly to yourself in your mind over and over again. I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you. When you're saying those words over and over again, please forgive me, I'm sorry, I love you, thank you. When you're saying those words, when you're saying those sentences, you're cleaning your mind from those past programs which have been limiting and you're talking to your subconscious mind and you're saying, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. And as you're saying these things in your mind, you're cleansing your mind. So it enters this state of zero. This state of zero is where you are now able to listen to the divine. You're now is able to listen to the stillness in your mind and be guided to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. This is a spiritual practice. This is another way to reprogram your subconscious mind. So you get into this childlike state of complete zero, as they like to call it. Your mind is always going to be active. But if you can begin to silence it because you feel good, then what's going to happen is that at this emotional state, you're going to be doing the same thing as they do in Zero Limits. But you need to get your mind working for you initially before you can go beyond it in things like Zero Limits. So in order to start creating more peace in your life and start um, allowing those things which have caused you trouble in relationships, maybe money, maybe health, when one of those things are... are have been smoothed out it's because you've used your mind to be able to help you a little bit so ask better questions make better affirmations create a vision board um, create good feelings in your environment by exercising more and start moving into these deeper brainwave patterns by maybe listening to music that allows you to get yourself in things like meditation will allow yourself your mind to be able to enter these deeper states of mind where you feel happier um, things like doing exercise will get you into these deeper levels of state of mind that will make you feel happier. Eating good foods will get you into the state of mind which will make you feel happier. Um, saying affirmations when you feel good will make you feel happier, but they will make you feel terrible if you feel awful. <laughs> so don't say them if you don't feel it, if you don't feel good. Say things when you feel good and then look for evidence of things working out for you. Your, your mind is constantly sending out a broadcast signal. Make sure that it's happy, clear and sound. And in order to be able to do that, 
You have to understand how you function. You are creator. Your mind is like a radio station. Send out exactly what it is that you want. You do that by saying affirmations when you feel good, surrounding yourself with beautiful pictures and asking better questions. Because you ask better questions, you're going to get better answers. And remember, all of this is on a higher level. So that means you have to bring your energy higher to be able to match that. If you're wanting to attract more money, you've got to have higher energy and you've got to add more value to the world. If you're wanting more health, you've got to, you've got to think better feeling thoughts that are happier and more uplifting and you've got to eat better foods. That's going to make your, that's going to make your vibration raise. If you want better relationships, start being kind to yourself. Start giving yourself the benefit of the doubt. Start giving people the benefit of the doubt. Start looking for ways to appreciate people instead of complain because when you complain, it's like boom, you're going to drop right back into a, you know, that old obsolete program which you had running. In order to change, you've got to start thinking differently to start with. And then once you've got your mind and your life in a good feeling place, then you can go beyond it. And that's when you probably want to read something like Joe Vitale's Zero Limits so you can really get into this divine mind later. Ask yourself better questions to start with and your life will begin to change and morph as a result. In conclusion, there's one thing that I've really learned, which is most of the world is operating at the level of beta mind, which is that everyday alertness. And that's basically because the media is pumping out information. And remember, if you're not in these deepest levels of mind more regularly, what's going to happen is that you're going to be more in your fight or flight zone, which is your beta levels more of the time, which means there's more cortisol running through your body. When you start to practice something like meditation and you exercise more and you eat better and you ask better questions and you look for reasons to feel good, what happens is your mind begins to slow down and you start to see more of life. But when you're operating at this beta pattern because you're reacting to all the news and everything that's being pumped out at you, what's going to happen is, is that your mind is going to be closed to seeing opportunities, closed to seeing solutions. So if you manage to get this far and you've managed to get on this podcast, that means you're doing something right. But now it's time to go a little bit further and try a meditation and, and start entering the silence and maybe spend a little bit more time in nature. Nature is based on an alpha brainwave pattern. So spending time in alpha will help you tune your brain and your mind and your body to this slower, more beautiful, receptive state. All the states from alpha, theta and delta are much more receptive. And the beta pattern where most people are at or where you may be at during the day is higher and it's not as receptive as these deep, deeper states. So get feeling good, get fit, finding a way to enter these deeper states of mind more regularly and you're going to find your mind and body will follow suit and you'll begin to see things that you didn't see before because that's how the mind works. It will show you more of what's working, it will show you more opportunity when you become a little bit slower. And as it says in the Bible, when you humble yourself to be as a child, you will enter the kingdom of heaven. And really what that's saying is, is if you look back on what we were talking about with the brainwave patterns earlier, it was between the ages of naught and 12, you were going from theta, delta, alpha. So what if you started returning to those brainwave patterns more regularly by finding that sort of music online or doing meditations, which you can do one of mine here, or sitting, sitting still, in meditation or spending a bit more time in nature or exercising all of these ways will help you into your own level of heaven whatever that is for you and heaven is a state of mind and so is hell enter the kingdom of heaven within your mind by feeling good that's how you do it anyway i hope you'd enjoy the show if you like it please give it a like thumbs up leave a review it's always appreciated and draws more people to the show to enjoy and enjoy this information and as always I wish you green lights all the way.